This is my third video now on the topic of electrical problems uh, when you suspect a problem battery or alternator but it's not obvious which. So I've already covered looking at both the battery and the alternator specifically and if you haven't already you should view those two videos before this one uh, but lastly I um, do want to go over the connections between the two and uh, where some problems might have developed in the wiring. Uh, so you, you would start with um, testing uh, basic continuity along the direct circuitry to just check the wiring and uh, any fusible links in place. Um, so use the resistance setting on your multimeter. Uh, a beep test is fine uh, or you can just look for a low resistance measurement and then you can test the circuits. So that's the battery positive to the alternator positive, uh, which will usually be the red cable coming off the alternator, and uh, the battery negative to the alternator body. Um, and you would also want to check the fuse box, find an open fuse or a relay that's live, and check that there is battery voltage at its, um, at its plug terminals. And uh, here you might find fusible links blown or damaged, uh, which can create problems that uh, look like a bad battery or alternator. And at the same time, you would cast an eye over the wiring in question to look for um, any obvious physical damage or, uh, you know, maybe burned cables. I mentioned the battery connections before um, in the other videos, checking for corrosion or loose fittings at the battery. Now, I once destroyed an alternator on this car because the uh, positive wiring cable from the alternator uh, which runs along here on the side of the engine came loose and ended up somehow rubbing against the uh, power steering pulley uh, and it eventually wore through the insulation and shorted the alternator positive to the engine body and that um, overloaded the alternator and cooked it completely. Now you can wiggle any suspect wires uh, while watching voltage while the car's running, uh, any weird changes while you wiggle the cables, and then you should suspect that particular cable, of course. Now be careful, obviously, when you do this around moving components. So that's the absolute basics, uh, but you can have continuity present, but uh, yet with high resistance remaining as a consequence of damaged or corroded connections that haven't failed completely yet. Um, the best way to test for this as a practical problem uh, is with a voltage drop test. So all we're doing here is measuring the voltage differential between the alternator and the battery on each side of the circuit. Uh, but you need to do it with the system under load so, a, so that a lot of current is flowing through the circuit. Um, so as you would uh, with testing the alternator itself, turn on everything. Um, headlights, fan, everything that you can think of. And then get the engine revs up to about 2000 RPM. Uh, if you can't manually control the throttle from the engine bay while doing the readings simultaneously, uh, you might need a helper in on the um, gas pedal. Uh, but what you want to do anyway is to measure the voltage directly between the battery positive and the alternator positive and then the battery negative and the alternator negative which is the alternator body and see what those readings are so the difference in terms of the voltage drop should be less than 0.2 volts on each side um, and as you can see here it is a bit above that on the positive side for me it went as high as 350 millivolts and it's sustaining around 320 or 330 here. Uh, but the negative side is under 40, so that's okay. But yeah, the positive side's high. So if one side or the other is above that 200 millivolt threshold, then you have identified some high resistance somewhere in the circuit between the two ends. And what you would then do is break the circuit down into sections and try to isolate where the problem lies. And by the way, in doing this, it's um, helpful to have some different types of multimeter probes, uh, like these alligator jaw types that um, just allow me to clamp the probes onto their target and free my hands up, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So here, for example, the battery positive goes to the alternator terminal via the starter motor. Uh, so I could measure the uh, difference between the battery terminal and the starter motor crimp. 
Now to get at the starter motor I need to go under the car and the probe needs to be clipped on to the uh, positive connection here uh, which is in the middle of the cable between the alternator and the battery. And then repeating our test um, the measurement is here under 100 millivolts so not great but not terrible for this half of the connection and then I'll try the other half by moving the probe from the battery to the alternator positive uh, again the other one is still on the starter motor here so now measuring the other half of the cable and now we're getting around uh, 200 millivolts uh, just in that one section so if you add that measurement to the other, uh, you can see where the total you know, 300 plus comes from. Now I could continue hunting along the circuit until I found the particular cable or connection or whatever that was causing the drop. Uh, and it could even be as small as the terminal fitting itself uh, or, a connect or its connection. So I might be measuring a drop here between the terminal and the main body of the cable wiring, uh, which would suggest that the connection there is dodgy. Uh, but in this case though I couldn't find an issue with the fittings, the resistance seemed to be through the entire cable. So I might want to replace the entire thing at some point. Okay, so if you have a battery, um, alternator or connections problem, then these last three videos should have at least helped you uh, pinpoint the problem. But as I explained already, I'm only trying to cover here the big picture stuff. Um, so that about rounds it off for the major candidates for uh, battery or charging problems. Now there's one more thing I will cover in a fourth video uh, which will relate to looking outside the charging system uh, if your battery keeps going dead. But that is it for now. Uh, so I uh, hope that was helpful.